So today we're going to show you how you can configure a ESP32 Lilygo smartwatch to capture movement data as we can see here in slow motion and then we can pass that through a machine learning process in Google Collaboratory so that it can then tell us what movement we've made based on the data that we've taught it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video and there are more videos on our channel and we'll be adding more feature updates in the near future. So if you download the example linked in the description and extract it on your PC and then open it in Visual Studio and ensure that you've got your SSID and password set and the already trained variables commented out and then set your watch and your COM port as normal and enable the serial debugger as well and we're just going to build and upload this to our board. Now if you haven't used the OTA part of the debugging before, do ensure that you watch the video appearing in the top right now. Um, if you want to do the debugging over the air, as there is one remote transport option that will need setting, um, but you can do that in a moment because we're going to do another upload OTA just to show that happening. So if you do tap the watch at this point and you're still connected over serial then you can see the data is also streamed out over serial so you could skip the OTA part. So we're also going to enable the trace only and full speed options in the visual micro debugger. Um, this ensures the messages come out as fast as possible with no throttling whatsoever. Um, but this can be dangerous depending on what what else you're doing with your sketch and with your PC. So we're just going to add a breakpoint into the sketch here and as it's running trace only it won't actually stop here but this is just to ensure that the Wi-Fi debugger is set up correctly at the start. So if we just set our IP address as we have at the top um, and it should appear if you've got the Bonjour service installed again that's in the OTA video um, we can upload our sketch over the air and once we've done this we'll be able to receive the same data over Wi-Fi. So you can see the progress in the serial monitor if you are still connected um, otherwise you'll just see this sat here for a short while before you, your board resets and your programs updated. So now as we've got the COM port selected, sorry the network port selected it'll open the serial monitor as shown here and if we make a movement and we can detach from the PC at this point as well if you've got battery power then again you can see the same data is streamed back to the serial window in a CSV format of just X, Y and Z essentially um, and this is in the same format that we'll need to go into our machine learning model. So now we know what's happening we can clear the window and perform the same action say 10 times and there is a pause at the end of each action in our sketch of five seconds and this is just so that you can move back without worrying about setting off the the motion sensor that begins recording essentially so as soon as you start moving your arm as ours is on our wrist it'll start recording the data then there's a five second lag where it doesn't mind what you do and then it'll start being sensitive again so you can repeat this as many times as you need to upload into your machine learning model. 10 is normally a, a good start just to, to see the principle in action. So if we copy all this data we can then save this into a CSV file on our PC and we're going to name it by the action we're performing. So in this case we're going to do punch as that's the action we're actually doing at the time not that you can really tell by looking at the numbers and if we just clear off the other bits of text that aren't the CSV data and add in the header of AX, AY, AZ and this is just to feed it into the collaboratory TensorFlow project in a moment. So if you now move your wrist with it programmed or tap your device depending on what you've got you can see in the serial monitor and on the screen that you'll have these prompts as to what it's doing. So as we've got ours connected wirelessly over the network 
we put both in shot you can see as I make a movement the data comes streaming out which is very useful so now we could go and perform a variety of actions without actually being tethered to our PC and if we just look at it in slow motion you can see the short window where it is reading but you barely actually see the prompt in reality it's more of a, a green flash but most actions that we're recording here are quite quick so now that we've recorded our bunch and flex actions we can go over to the Google Collaboratory project which again is linked in the description and this is a clone of an Arduino project which we've made some very slight alterations to just to help it suit our particular device and accelerometer so we're just going to need to go and run the first cell and this will set up the environment on the cloud server that's been allocated to us for this session and we can also see the amount of disk and RAM that's available in the top right once you've been connected then we'll need to upload our punch and flex CSV files to the cloud server so it can process them as you can see I've already run this through um, but we're going to go through each step just so you can see what will actually happen when you work through it yourself so it just takes a moment to install all the packages into the Python environment and then we can go and add our, our own custom data to the project we have supplied some CSV files from this example we recorded here um, so you can use those if you want but it's more fun if you actually build your own device with your own gestures on it and we'll show you where you need to make changes to this once we get to that shortly so if we just follow the instructions to upload our data and we'll need to put it into the folder that it drops you into so we're just going to go up a level and then press upload on the content folder which is where we were a moment ago So if we now go and pick our files wherever we've saved them and you can press control and highlight both of these to just upload them both in one go press OK on the reminder and then we can once that's done we can just go and run the next segments so this is a plot of our, our punch data and you could also run these plots live while you're collecting it as well using the visual micro plot charts there's a video in the top right about that and some of the changes we've made to this is to remove the gyroscope as the board we have has no gyroscope present and to change the ranges of the values to help the normalization process and the gestures if you did want to change them depending on the name of your CSV files you change here and they're also in the sketch as well which we'll see later when we actually run the model back on our board so we can now run all the randomization and splitting and then build and train our model and this normally takes a minute or so and this is running it through all of the data to ensure that it's learned as much as possible from what's available and as you can see the loss is quite low generally which is a good sign And once we've completed this we'll be able to go through the steps to show how far the validation versus training readings are apart as well as be able to convert this into a compressed model we can put back on our board so as you can see most of this is quite quick to run as we're just graphing data that we've got in memory on the server and as you can see generally the validation data and loss is close to the training so that's a good sign it's not always perfect as we see there but you'll see once you have it back on your device that this stuff isn't quite perfect with only 10 readings but I'm sure with more training and a bit more accuracy on detecting the motion at the start you could end up with something quite good quite easily So now we're just going to convert our model to a TensorFlow Lite model so we can embed it and it's come out to only 76 kilobytes. So we can now encode that back into a header file, which if we go back over to the Files tab, once that's completed, we'll be able to refresh this and see that we've got a model.h file. So you can download this TBC 
and we're just going to replace the model.h that's in the sketch at the start when you download it from the website. And there you go, you've turned your CSV data back into a machine learning model. So if we go back over to Visual Studio and go into our sketch, we can now uncomment the already trained variable and this just enables all of the extra code to allow TensorFlow to kick in on the board itself and it will start actually trying to work out what motion you made um, every time you move and if it can't figure it out then it just starts listening immediately so there isn't the five second delay in this um, it does mean it will detect potentially the wrong the wrong motions but you can work out depending on what actions you're performing better timings and better ways of sensing the start of something you need to pay attention to. So as you can see here we've uploaded this to our board sorry and we can see the readings coming out um, as we make a motion and we can see at the end of those readings that it also tells us what action it thinks we're performing and in this case it is correct. So if we then perform a punch instead of a, a flex then it can tell the difference. So that's the machine learning model in action and it's also on the screen as well. So that we've only taught it these two base actions but you can teach it a variety of different actions. So there we go, there's, there's the punch and you can see on screen it's written in text as well. And if we do the flex, then there you go, it got that right.